Hi friends, so welcome to lecture 42 on our helicopter dynamic series. And today we are going to derive expressions for thrust and power, specifically DCT and DCP. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now let us look at each of these expressions. So in the previous lecture, I derived expressions for FC and FX. Okay. Now remember that FC is the vertical force which is acting at a given section of unit length. That's an airfoil section. So it is essentially a two dimensional section. So to make it three dimensional, I multiply it by dr. Okay. And then this expression FZ dr is for one blade. So I multiply it by n to get the expression for n blades. Now to get the dq, I take the force in the plane of rotation. I multiply it by dr. And then I also multiply it by the moment arm. So r is the distance from the axis of rotation to the point you are at. Then I take this whole thing and I multiply it by capital N, which is the number of blades. To get power, I take the expression for dq and I multiply it by the rotation speed. So that gives me the expression for power. So we need to get expressions for up and ut, which if you remember were the perpendicular and tangential velocity at a given section. Now in vertical flight, up would be capital V plus small v, where capital V is the climb velocity, small v is the induced velocity. So we are taking the general case because if we set capital V equal to zero, we essentially obtain the our case as a special condition. And ut would be rotation speed into the distance r. So this is the tangential velocity. Because you are in vertical flight, this is completely coming from the rotation of the blades. There is no component of forward flight here that we will discuss much later in the course. So up is v plus v, ut is rotation speed into r. So if we divide these two, we get the expression here v plus v by rotation speed into r. And if you recollect from the lecture on climb, this would be same as lambda, the inflow ratio. So essentially we see that this important part, small v or lambda or up is coming to us from a different theory because BT cannot calculate small v. It has to come from momentum theory, vortex theory or some other theory. Now we take the definition of phi now, phi was defined in terms of up and ut, but what typically happens in a rotor is that up is much smaller than ut because remember, up is the induced velocity plus the climb velocity and ut is coming from rotation speed. So typically rotation speed is going to be much larger. And here you have to keep in mind what are the exact values for your particular rotor system. This may not be good for a wind turbine rotor or for some different rotor systems. So at least in the helicopter rotor system, we can say that phi is up by ut and therefore I can consider phi to be small. And if phi is small, then cos phi is one, sine phi is phi, u is ut. And many more simplifications happen in the expressions, for example, of fx and fz, which we derived in terms of l and d in our previous lecture. So one more approximation we'll make at this stage is that there is no stall and there is no compressibility. So essentially I can write CL as a linear model. CL is the lift curve slope A into alpha, which is the angle seen by the blade section. So all these rotor airfoil properties are below the stall. And typical value of the lift curve slope A is 5.7. Let's get to the expression for lift. That's half rho u square CCL. And now in the CL part, I substitute A, the lift curve slope, into theta minus phi, phi being up by ut, 
resuming small angle. Also, I replace u by ut here. For the d expression, I get similarly half rho u square ccd. That's half rho ut square ccd. Now, CL model is something like this. So, from experiments, we can obtain CL is in this form here. At the point where stall happens, CL starts going down. This is at some region of alpha being about 12 to 15 degree. It depends on the particular wing section you are dealing with or the airfoil section. Now, we generally try to stay in this model, which is the linear model. Okay, now this graph is for an airfoil which is symmetric. If it was not symmetric, it would be something like this here. But again, there would be a linear part and then there would be stall. For CD, the curve goes something like this here. There is a constant value and then somewhere around stall, it starts going up. Okay, so we will assume CD to be constant in this linear region for CL. So now let's get the expression for dt. So here, because phi is small, fz largely comes from L. So I can get this expression. And I can immediately get the expression for dct, which is the non-dimensional thrust coefficient, as dt divided by this expression here, which is also in the unit of force. And so I get this expression here. So let's now expand this expression out. So I basically put in the terms here, the lift expression completely. And now we use the fact that rotor solidity sigma is defined as NC by pi r. So I can get NC by pi r here. I can take it out and get sigma. And then my remaining things simplify to some extent. Now I need to put ut and up into these equations. So I do that here. And you clearly see here there is some further simplification. This expression v plus v by rotation speed into r would be lambda. So there's a lambda here. And then sigma comes here. So the expression is becoming more and more simple. Now, we can further simplify the expression in terms of mathematical calculation by presuming r bar is r by r. So here the r bar only goes from 0 to 1, not from 0 to r. And therefore, my expression for dct becomes like this. Now, do remember that to get ct, we will have to integrate this expression on r bar. And during that time, we have to keep in mind if any of these values, for example, a, theta, lambda, or even sigma are functions of r bar, which may be the case. So let's now turn our glance to the torque. So like I mentioned, the torque is the force in the plane of rotation into the moment arm r into the number of blades n. And we write this as L phi plus d, where d is the component coming completely from drag, that is cd. And L phi is essentially because of the lift generated part of drag. So this is essentially the induced drag type of component. So we expand this whole thing out. Now, you remember all these terms, half rho u square, then you have c, then you have a, then you have theta minus phi, then you have phi here, and half rho u square c into cd, where we are assuming cd is a constant value in this below stall region. Now, we expand this out, put our usual expressions, and then we have to divide by this particular factor here. Okay. And we use the fact that dcq is equal to dcp. And doing that, we get an expression here. Now, you can clearly see that the cd part of the expression is completely coming from drag. And this will become, in fact, a source of the profile power. The part here is essentially coming from lambda. 
or inflow so this is the part which again becomes the source of induced power now in general again these quantities theta a sigma to some extent even cd could be functions of r because you could have a variation in twist throughout the blade you could have a variation in chord which would impact sigma you could have a variation in the airfoil section which would involve a and cd so like i mentioned that different airfoil sections could be used you could have a and cd varying with respect to r twist could vary with respect to r which is very typical for most helicopter blades so in general dct and dcp have to be integrated numerically on the blade span and again you can use various numerical methods which you may have studied in numerical analysis for example simpson's method trapezoidal rule or gauss quadrature now in certain conditions if we assume the properties are very simple for example we assume the blade is uniform with respect to the cord with respect to airfoil sections and so on and also theta is uniform or very simply defined in terms of certain variations then these integrations can be performed simply and you get closed form expression and those are some expressions which are always useful to get insight into the problems we will discuss that in our next class see you then